Did you think your screen was stuck? You did, didn't you? That's my trick for Halloween. Your treat's going to be the actual guitar lesson. Today, we're covering Little Demon by Screamin' Jay Hawkins. I can hear you all laughing at me, not with me. That's fine. This is how I start all my real guitar lessons, by the way. Little Demon, let me tell you about it. Mickey Baker was the guitar player. This was on the Screamin' Jay Hawkins session where they actually recorded I Put a Spell on You. So, we've all heard that song. There's probably a few guitar lessons on that one. I wanted to do something different. Also, shout out to my friend Dan, who kind of asked me to do this song. So he brought it to my attention. I heard it. I said, yes. Now, another little interesting bit of trivia about this song is it's kind of attributed, uh, you know, a little bit to a big influence on Psychobilly because it's one of the first uh, horror themes brought to rock and roll. You know, I put a spell on you as well, that whole spooky sort of thing. Um, so that's a really cool bit of trivia. I want to tell you a little bit about what I think about the session and what I was hearing when I was really delving in. But first, let's have a listen. I'm going to play the cover for you right through. Sit back, enjoy. Hit like. Don't forget to hit like. Put a comment. What did you think? Enjoy. Here's the cover and I'll talk to you in a moment. <laughs> Okay, so you can see, really, really good fun. It's kind of jump blues, uh, you know, it's kind of rock and roll. I don't know, what do you guys think that is? What do you, what do you call that? You tell me what you think. Uh, I just think it was really damn cool. Really cool song. Before we get into the actual lesson, don't forget, if you are a member of the Patreon, you can get the transcription. Let me thank my patrons who have joined. Mark Swartley, Mike Reynolds, Danny Lowry, Biagio, Capircio, and Sean Polden. Thank you guys so much for joining. Really appreciate it. I may have actually doubled up some of the mentions recently, but, you know, it's fine. If you get an extra mention, good for you. Now, Mickey Baker, on that particular session, I believe he didn't have the easiest time. In fact, apparently, they were having trouble uh, getting a few things to gel. And Scream and Jay passed around some potion, probably some alcohol. Let's face it, it's kind of just a potion. And then things gelled a little better. There's a few versions of this session out there. And uh, I like this one. I heard some other ones that were really good too. But what I liked about this one, I felt like Mickey Baker was looking for a place to find a home with the major scale, almost in a jazz context, but still falling back on those pentatonics from rock and roll. There was something really interesting going on there that he was trying to do. Um, and I think he achieved it. I think he caught the playfulness and the color of Scream and Jay. 
and it's a really cool solo. So stick around to learn that. And all the little chords and stuff, the actual... He chopped in and out a little bit on that recording or they've kept things and taken some things off. It's very difficult to discern what he was really doing uh, on the chords. So I've taken the best of what I can hear in the guitar and mixed it with what I'm hearing on the piano. So it's a really fun part to play and I think you'll find some of these chords really interesting. So enough said about all that. Let's get into the lesson. If you've got your transcription, I'll call out the bar numbers. If not, just play along at home. Do your best. So it begins with this little intro. <laughs> Alright, so let's have a look at what's happening here. This first chord is actually uh, an E flat 6 9 sliding into an A flat 6 9. On the recording, I can I think I can hear the guitar just doing those two. Might have been that, but the piano definitely thickened it out a little bit, so I've tried to capture that. So what I'm doing here, 10, 10, 11, 11, E flat 6 9, slide it up to an A flat 6 9 here at 15, 15, 16, 16. Okay, the next thing we do, we play this D7 chord. Just imagine a D7 like that. We're doing it here, 10, 11, 10, 10. So we hit that. And we do a D flat 6, 9. Okay, so that's 8, 8, 9, 9. Uh, so we hit that. Drop back one. Slide back to your D flat 6, 9. So we drop to a C6, 9. Up to a D flat 6, 9. Great chord. I really, really like that chord. I use it a lot, especially in jazz stuff. So we come back to this spot here, but the thing is, and this could get really confusing if I go into it, but now it's being used as an A flat 6 9, okay? There's enough shared notes between an E flat 6 9 and an A flat 6 9 that the voicing can look exactly the same. This would be A flat 6 9 with the A in the flat in the bass, E flat 6 9, the E flat in the bass. So an interesting one, that one. We can sort of call it like a chord synonym, I guess, but um, yeah, so. We've, we've come off the... We're up to here being used as an A-flat 6-9 because I know the bass is playing A-flat at this point. Then we come up to an A-6-9 and then we play... So that's 11-11, uh, 12-12. Mm -hmm. And then we play an E-flat 7 just like we played the D-7 but we're up uh, one fret at the 11th fret. So 11-12, 11-11. Okay, so... Okay, so that concludes the intro and gives you quite a bit of information as to what's happening in the rest of the song. They're the kind of chords I've really worked off, but I wanted to give you some options for the verses. It's almost like a good little introduction to Jump Blues. It's in A-flat, this song. It's basically just an A-flat blues working between, you know, think um, A-flat 7, D-flat 9, I like to say, or just a D-flat 7, and then A-flat there. E flat there. Once the verse begins, I actually just used that little intro bit, the 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 E six nine, uh, sorry E flat six nine, to the A flat six nine. So once those words begin, okay, do it again, and then we hit it again, then again. Um, so yeah, I just sit on that. But what I do is I get back here a little early. So I've got time to play this little lick running down. So we, so the verse goes. Uh, two, one, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three, and four. Okay, so I'm doing four and four, and I'm doing uh, seven, six, and I and I just hit a dead string. So, so it captures that little piano run down into the chorus. And now we're at the chorus. So there was nothing really new there. You were just reusing that intro. I hope that makes sense. Don't be afraid to ask questions in the comments. Don't forget to hit like. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to send me gifts. Whatever you like. Okay. Chorus. So that's actually bar 16 there. So I'm doing the top part of a D flat 9. I'm just playing. And I'm kind of sliding in. So let me show you there. I'm actually like playing, uh, let's exaggerate the slide in, but let's say we, we start on the second fret, third, 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 with one finger, and we slide in. We, we, you don't have to do that, we're really playing um, the D flat 9, which is F, C flat, yes, it has to be called a C flat, I'm sorry, E flat, and an A flat. Just like that. If you're wondering why I would 
call it a C flat instead of a B. You're probably going, why wouldn't you just call that a B? D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat. I'm not going to call a scale D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat, B natural, D flat. Where did the C go? I know it's spooky, supernatural, screaming Jay Hawkins, but we need that. We need to call something C. So I'm going to call that a C flat. Okay. You'll yeah. I know. It's just the way it is. So from there, what happens from there? So we do two bars of that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then here, you could kind of just go. If you want to make it easy, four and four. Bah, 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 bah. What I've done to capture a little bit of that jump blues feel, I'm actually playing a fret five, fret six, and fret four. It's a little, a little jazzier, and there's there's something in there that's reflecting that in the horn line, the piano. I, I can't recall exactly. I actually transcribed this a, a few weeks ago, and I had to, I had to actually take time to let it sink in because if I tried to cover it with the solo and all the little bits of phrasing, ah, just, you know, trust me guys, I don't I don't transcribe these and then suddenly instantly oh, I can play them. Sometimes I can transcribe huge sections um, and the next day I can't even remember how to play it because it hasn't sunk in. I've heard it quick enough to get it on paper and I have to let it sink in and take time. So if you feel discouraged ever when you're learning these uh, things, when it's not sticking in your head, do not keep up the hard work. It will pay off. You'll pick it up one day and you'll hear it, okay? Now, uh, so that was the second chord of the chorus. So the first chord, bump, bump, second chord. And then we go to the third chord. So third chord is exactly the same as what we do for the D flat, but we're gonna do it up here uh, in the realm of an E flat. So this is a D flat, D flat nine, but we're playing up here. Slide in a little bit if you can, come back to the D flat. And then back to our first chord. Or, if you're doing this instead, if you find that easier. So, for the next verse, I wanted to just do something different. This one, again, is capturing a little bit of the piano run. So, what I've done is that classic... It's that classic, you know, it's almost like the hound dog thing. Marked C on the transcription is the verse, which is bar 25. So, coming into... Sorry, bar 24. So, coming into bar 24... Let's come back from bar 23. Here we go. Just an A flat like that, five, four, four. Okay. One, two, three. Next time along, bar 26, three, four, one, two, three. Bar 28, two, three, four, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Exactly the same way we finished the last verse. So the next chorus, almost the same as the last chorus. I just the end changes a little bit. There's actually a bit of a guitar lick there that you can you can hear on the recording. So for the second chorus, use the D flat nine again. Use the A flat. A flat six when we actually do it like that, because this is an A flat chord. One, two, three, four, five, six. F is the sixth note. One, two, three, four, five, six. There it is again. A flat. Six, drop all the notes we don't need. There it is, okay? Maybe use your third finger because we're not using it over there, so. So that's the bar three and four of this section, which on the transcription, I can't read the numbers because there are sharp logos blocking them. That's that's really irritating, actually. 34, 34, 35, 36, and 37. It was that little part there. So in bar 38, last part of the chorus, up to the E flat, D flat, and here's this really cool little lick. Okay, so that's um, out of an A flat. We're going uh, the fifth fret there on the third string, fourth fret there on the second string, and we're going then play the sixth fret on the fourth string, flatten to the mid uh, third and second string like that. So uh, pick up if you can, down, up, and then down across these two six and six on the third and second. So it's A flat. And this little, it's a little bit like a D flat chord. In theory. You know what? I wouldn't I wouldn't overthink it that way. It's just a cool lick. One, and two, three. Uh, you could use picking fingers as well. Like that. Um, but I would suggest if you're using a flat pick, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down. Alright, and the solo begins. So then the bar 41... 
the solo kind of starts, but it officially kind of kicks in bar 42. So it goes on the fourth beat. We bend the sixth fret. And we're holding the, the fourth fret on the second string. So six on the third, fourth on the second string. Uh, pick down, up on the second string. Okay, and that's where it begins. I'll just play that loosely for you, and we'll come back and learn it. So we've got... So let's learn that lick. That's the first lick of the solo. Uh, I already told you how to do the bend. So we do that bend. You do let it down a little. Actually, sorry, just hold it. Um, just bring it down a little and bring it back up. And that's kind of the beginning of bar 42. And then we repeat this bend again. Okay, just like that. So, And then uh, we play four and four. And then six on the fourth string. And then six on the fifth string. And six on the four. Six on the four. Six on the four. Okay. Alright, so that's 42 to 44. Going to bar 45. We've hit that six the last time. Halfway through that bar, we do this. Alright, let's look at that lick there. So... Halfway through bar 45, we switch to this, which is kind of funny because it's like it's on beat three. We've kind of shifted gears a little early for the next part, which I really like that kind of thing, sort of anticipates the uh, the, the change. So uh, I'll go from the beginning of the solo. So the one was the second one of those. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we're bending the six on the second string, holding the four on the first string, and we, we hit it again, let it down, hit the, the six and the four without bending now, no bending. Okay, that's beat three on bar 46. Bar 47, four and four, six on the third string, four on the third string, six on the four, and then four there, so. And give it a little bend, I bend that one by pulling down slightly. Okay, so the next little phrase goes like this. Like that, okay? So this is now just a little bit of major scale, okay? Um, it's almost out of context to use a little bit of A flat major over A flat major in a blues context, but that's what I really like about it. It's kind of fun. But... Yeah, it's kind of cheerful, you know, it's unusually cheerful. And I can see how Mickey Baker might have had, uh, you know, some trouble trying to make all this work. You know, he might have been, might have come from playing jazz sessions. I, I believe he, there was some some connection with Tiny Grimes. And, um, you know, he would have been moving into a rock setting and, and trying to maybe in, insert himself a little bit here. And I think he's done a really good job. So... If you don't believe in practicing your major scales, this will prove you wrong because this is straight up to some nice major scale stuff. So three, five, six, three. We're on the fourth string, three, five, six, and then we go to the third string, fifth fret on the third string. So third fret on the third string, fifth fret on the third string, second fret on the second string, six on the fourth string. And then we go fifth fret. Okay, so. Okay, just like that. And that's that whole little run there. It was bar 48, 49, and 50. Coming into 51, we get this phrase. So that's more or less a pentatonic, but again, a little bit of clever variation. So what happens there? We're on the fourth fret. We pick up because we're coming into bar 51. So we're at the end of bar 50. Two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two. So that's just a pentatonic run. We're going four, seven, four, seven, four, six, four, six, three, six, six, that's on the four, six, six, roll straight across, six on the three, four on the three, six on the fourth, fourth fret on the fourth string. Six on the fourth string, fourth on the fourth string, six on the fifth string. Play it again. Okay, all pentatonic. But he's put the sixth degree from the major. 
just jammed into the pentatonic, which is really a uh, really common thing in rockabilly, jump blues, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, he would have um, he was early to the party, especially doing that in a rock and roll context. Really, really cool. So there's nothing uh, of any particular mention throughout the next verse. You can use all the concepts we've talked about. You could even take licks from the solo and put them over the verses. It's all up for grabs. You can do a whole lot of really cool stuff. Section E here on the transcription is really just about um, the backing for the horn solo because he did some cool stuff. I, I didn't nail it 100% actually when I did the cover, uh, but uh, I'll show you exactly what you should roughly be doing. So, uh, it, you know, we're back to uh, A flat, All right? We're just playing that blues, but it now does a thing called a quick change. So it goes A flat, and we do this little lick on the fifth fret on the third and fourth fret of the second, which is just a little out of the A flat, little chord out of the A flat chord, out of the bigger chord. So we go like that. Then we flatten four and four. We sit for a little while. Then we go six on the fourth string. I'll play it for you. Okay, so showed you how to play that and then this lick here six on the fourth string the five and the four from before then we play six and six on the third and second four and four on the third and second and hammer to the five with uh on the third string so minor third to major third is what's happening there six on the fourth string six on the fifth string six on the fifth string okay um this is yeah it's like backing the horn but it's all seemed relevant. There was some good substance here, so I thought, I'll capture that. Let's do something. Let's not gloss over it. Bar 58, he does this. So we go, oh, one. Now, why he's, why I feel like this is really useful is, if you think about it, our first four... So that's that, our first four bars of this section. One, two, three, four, one captures the D flat and then the next lick captures an A flat so when I mentioned the quick change before that's what I'm talking about someone's decided that when we get to the chorus let's highlight a D flat chord instead of staying on A flat for four bars so he captures that in what he's playing and then when it does go to the D flat chord uh, harmonically in bar 58 he's playing this lick one again it's just the the little cluster out of the D flat 9 chord so a really cool thing that happens in blues if you're playing major type ideas on the one chord if you take that and turn it into a minor uh, blues it goes beautifully over the four chord it fits perfect so that's what he's doing and that's bar 58. Uh, so 6, 4 and 4. 6 there, 4, 6, 6. And then in uh, bar 60, uh, 1, 2, 3, returns back to major by popping that major third of A flat in. Then the 6 and the 6. The 5 and the 4. Okay, so that was bar 60 and 61. And then in bar 62 uh, to the end of this section, he just does the turnaround kind of off the off the chords. Nothing special, sort of like... Well, it's special, but it's nothing too complicated. And then this little run. Okay, really, really cool. So um, that's just that same little theme, five and four. Cluster out of the A flat, six and six, five and four, six and six, five and four, fourth fret on the fourth string, sixth fret on the fifth string or A string. So G flat, E flat. Yeah, I didn't talk too much about the notes because I don't want to have a conversation. I don't want to force a conversation upon you uh, each time explaining why it's called a. Uh, this is a this flat or etc. Yeah, it can get complicated quick, so I just wanted to kind of keep it simple. But hopefully you guys are enjoying that. These ideas are all super useful over any blues and any kind of rockabilly thing. It's a real nice mishmash of ideas, uh, as is, you know, the whole Scream and Jay Hawkins thing. It's a it's a big pot of potion that's been mixed together, and it's uh, him casting his spell on you. 
the listener. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that. That's everything. The the rest of the song, uh, I didn't transcribe anything for the rest of the song. Even the ending, he just finishes on a on an A flat chord. There was really uh, nothing of particular note. Just a continuation of the cool stuff for you to play around with. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Happy Halloween as well. I, I don't personally really celebrate it here in Australia, though I've seen it more more over the last few years, which is kind of cool, because let's face it, Halloween's pretty cool. Uh, I would have loved to have run around and asked for chocolate and candy, as you guys call it when I was a kid, uh, but I probably ate enough candy. I'm lucky to have my teeth. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for all the support. Take it easy, and have a good evening, day weekend. I guess it really depends when you watch this video, doesn't it really?